Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. As usually, right, take it with a grain of salt, my favorite theorems, very, very biased point of view. Well, strictly speaking today, I don't want to talk about a theorem at all, but something that is called a lemma. But well, come on, what is the difference between a lemma and a theory? Theorem anyway, right? So um, and the lemma I'm going to talk about called the Schwarz-Zippel lemma is very, very useful in practice. So I, I like it a lot. And it's basically, um, again, the old observation that solving polynomial equations is just too hard. So let's come up with a, with a better idea. Um, and yeah, in, in particular, it's part of complexity theory. In this case, it's like the observation. There is a problem and you really want to solve it, but you just, just can't, it's too costly, it's too complicated. So maybe you can solve it approximately. Or in this case, you can say with a certain probability that it's true or not, which might even be enough um, for whatever you have in mind. Or it might be, uh, so that's what I usually do. I just have something I need to check. I just can't do it right now. I get a little bit annoyed, like, like, <laughs> like everyone, if you, if you can't do it. Um, so you use this lemma to check, oh yeah, this. Uh, whatever kind of equality is very likely to be true it's 99.9% .9%, and that's a good motivation to continue uh, looking for a, a, a precise solution, right? An abstract solution. Um, yeah, but so let's just jump right into it. It really comes from complexity theory, in particular, what, what is called PIT, uh, so polynomial identity testing. So you have two polynomials. Um, in my notation, polynomials will always be Fs or Gs. And they have a certain number of variables, doesn't matter so much, and you want to check whether they're equal. Um, or equivalently, whether, whether the difference is a zero polynomial. Or equivalently, whether any polynomial is a zero polynomial. Okay, and it sounds quite innocent. You should be able to check whether a polynomial is a zero polynomial. Huh? Sounds very innocent, but actually it's not as innocent as it is. And it's very easy to, this, to see because a lot of polynomials actually um, might come in disguises in some sense, let's say as determinants of some matrices or something like that. And it might not be absolutely obvious from the first glance that two polynomials are the same. So those two polynomials are the same, F and G, but you need to factor F to really see that. And factoring is certainly a process which you might not be able to do. Because, well, in, in this case, of course, you can, but imagine a huge polynomial. You, you don't know. So, hmm. uh, in particular, the problem is, um, from the viewpoint of complexity, that something in, like, like this has kind of a length which depends only on n, so it's a pretty short expression. But in order to factor it, it's quite costly. It expands into two to the n monomials. Um, so maybe you don't want to factor polynomials. Maybe you want to do something different in order to check whether f and g are the same, right? So the abstract approach is, of course, how can I check whether f and g are the same? I do exactly what I just said, factor it into, factor both into monomials and compare coefficients in front of the monomials. But let me repeat it, that might not be the optimal strategy what, for what you have in mind. And that's exactly where this lemma comes in. So let's actually have a look um, at an example to see what the lemma in the end will, will say. So let's say we have a certain polynomial in two variables, uh, x and y, and you want to figure out what are its roots. Okay, it seems to be a fair question. So here I took this polynomial, doesn't matter so much how it looks like. And let's say you want to figure out its roots in, in some finite field. Why? Well, because that's something a computer can do very easily, right? It's a finite field. So let's say a field with p elements, um, and you want to figure out its roots in uh, fp squared, and the square just comes from the fact that I have, well, two variables. So here is how it looks like, and I'll show you Mathematica in a second. Link uh, to some Mathematica uh, is in the, in the, in the description. Um, and of course, also a, a link to more material if you, if you want to, to read a little bit about the lemma is also in the description, or let's say even more than one link. Anyway. Um, uh, off topic, back to topic. So um, so here by example, p equals 11, d equals four. So d is just the degree of the polynomial. 
And the 11, you see it here because it's an 11 times 11 grid. And the only thing that is illustrated here is, uh, so this is the zero, zero position, for instance. And it's white because if you evaluate this polynomial at zero, zero, you get zero. Similarly, you can, you can actually, uh, whatever. This would be position uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. So this would be position something like four, four, six, if I got it in the right order and so on. And this, in, in this case, it spits out not zero. So the only thing you see here is whether it's zero or not zero, black and white, because that's what I want to check. I want to check whether it's a root. And then I have two numbers here. Okay, so I have this grid and these are all elements I could check, just everything, right? And uh, that's why I use the finite field. And I have this number here, which is the, the probability of, of an X, maybe I shouldn't say X, Y, of an A, B in, um, so both of them are in my finite field, in this case, uh, F11, the probability of them being zero, a, a root of this polynomial. So it's roughly a third. And how do I see that? How do I see that? I just count the number of white boxes and the number of black boxes, and the number of white boxes is approximately one third the number of black boxes. Um, that's certainly something you don't want to do because it might take too long, but you can do the following trick. And that's basically the lemma. For now, it just falls out of the blue. I take this value, which is d over p, degree over the field. Uh, over the over the characteristic of the field, and it's as you can see, it's an upper bound. So the left number is a percentage of roots, and the right number is an upper bound. Maybe that was just a fluke. So let's actually have a look at Mathematica. So here's Mathematica. It's exactly the same setup from before. I can uh, vary the prime. This is the prime thirty one. I can vary the degree of exactly the expression you have seen before, and those are the two numbers. The real percentage, so there, as you can see, there are almost no zeros. So it's 0.06%. And this funny upper bound, which is just D over P, right? And now I can vary, for example, my degree here. And as you can see, it gets, that's pretty nice, because of a little bit of random and, and still non-random patterns. But anyway, I want you to look at those numbers. Because as you can see, remember, the left-hand side is a real percentage. And the right hand side is this very easily computable upper bound. Well, as you can see, the upper bound is indeed an upper bound. It's always bigger. It's always bigger and it's not so bad. It's actually pretty good. And of course, I like to play with the pattern here. So let's choose a different prime. Let's go to 79. Why not? Um, yeah, as you can see, numbers are very close and it gets pretty random. Um, well, now it gets also pretty slow. Ooh. But still, the numbers are really good. And this, this funny upper bound that I just showed you, which is ridiculously easy to compute, it's D, the degree of the polynomial over P, the characteristic of the field. It seems to work. And that's pretty amazing. Well, good observation, right? OK, now we have this observation. What can we do with it? Well, the first thing I would try is I would test a different polynomial of a different degree. Um, and look at the same. And funny fact, it's, it's, it's again the same pattern. So you, you have an upper bound. Turns out that my chosen polynomial on this page was really kind of testing the upper bound to its limits because those two numbers were really close. This polynomial is smaller, but it's still an upper bound. It's still the same number, d over p, very, very simple. And the picture you see here is exactly the same just now um, because I have a three variable polynomial, x, y, z, and it's this one. I have to look uh, at roots in a cube. So, because now I have three coordinates, but otherwise it's the same picture. You have, you have, you have, so we have 11 in every direction. And which direction is missing? This direction is missing. 11. And every point here is a certain coordinate, A, B, C. And you spit out whether. Um, it, you use Mathematica to, to, to produce this picture. Black, of course, means it's not zero, and white means it's zero. And you can compute those probabilities by just counting. So Mathematica can do this for you, for example, or you can do it yourself. And I mean, this is ridiculously easy. Of course, it's just, as I said, d over p. Right? In particular, it's exactly the same as here, because I have p equals 11, d equals 4. 
I have p equals 11, p equals 4. So this thing doesn't depend on the number of variables, right? It just depends on the degree and, and the characteristic you choose. And that's very surprising. And that's then exactly the statement. So let's have a look. Um, so you have polynomial of a certain degree. Let's say it's not a constant polynomial. And with coefficients in some field, the field doesn't matter at all. You choose a certain subset. And in all my examples before, S was actually the whole field. You can do that. Um, so here, that's, that's why I have a P here. Because in general, the P is actually the order of S, right? The order of your chosen subset. And um, you have found roots. That's exactly what I say here. With probability, uh, a certain choice uh, from the subset is a root with probability d over s, always. You have always this upper bound d over s, which is of course ridiculously easy to compute. So it's basically comes for free. And then you have this funny extra addition here. F is, if f is non-zero, this only holds if f is non-zero. In particular, you could use this the other way around, right? So, um, but come back to the question from before, how can we actually check whether two polynomials are the same or whether a certain polynomial is zero? Well, just repeat this whole process, just repeat this whole process k times. And you can see that um, if you get k times in a row zero, this, this happens really, really rarely. So d over s, uh, if s is big, let's say s is really big, then d over s to the k gets very fast to zero. So, um, it, it gets more and more unlikely that this always holds, right? But now comes the point, right? Let's say you have a polynomial and you really want to know whether it's zero. You just throw in a few roots and you, you get zero all the time. So you can be almost certain, this is kind of, kind of the converse of this theorem then, you can be almost certain that it's constant zero. Right? It's a very simple idea. You want to know whether a polynomial is zero you just can't because it's too, too big, too cost efficient to factor it, too whatever. Just take your favorite finite field, for example, or actually any S in any field you want, uh, throw it at, uh, evaluate it at a, at a few points. If it spits out zero often enough, you're almost 100% certain that your polynomial was zero. And this is pretty cool. So I use this in practice quite a lot, right? If I want to check whether a polynomial equation holds, um, I can use this trick, right? You just evaluate it. Um, and if you get zero very, very often, or let's say a few times, no, actually not very, very often, the, the opposite, a few times, then it's very, very likely um, that actually your polynomial equation holds. And then it might be worthwhile to spend a few more days or a few more weeks or whatever to, to really nail down a, a rigorous proof and not a probabilis probabilistic argument. But if you're not like me and you only care about percentages anyway, and then this is really good by default, basically. And that's the, the schwarz simple lemma. Extremely simple and pretty powerful. Again, I say it again, because it's so simple, it's, it's so good. Just, you want to test whether a polynomial equation is zero, just throw at the polynomial enough, uh, evaluate it enough, let's say finite fields, and you are almost certain that your polynomial is uh, either zero or not. Okay, so let me show you an application. And uh, for example, it com comes up. So this theorem is by construction very useful in any kind of combinatorial um, counting arguments because in, in combinatorics, you very often have problems that you kind of want to, the computer could solve easily, but only up to a certain point because they are too complicated, they are NP complete or something like that. It's just too, too cost efficient to solve them. Um, count matrix is a hard problem. And maybe we can do something. So I'm matching, here's a graph. Uh, well, here are two graphs, here's a graph. And the graph is of course, just a collection of vertices and edges. And here's another graph. And the matching is just a collection of edges. So here's my matching. Um, such that all vertices appear as neighbors of your edge, but no, no, no edge appears twice and no edge is neighboring any of the other chosen edges. So I couldn't have, for example, in this matching, I, I choose those four red ones, but I can't take this one because then the red one would be adjacent to the graph. And good question is, given the graph, can I actually find the matching? 
And it's not so easy because if you just try randomly, you e easily run into problems by, by not being able to fill um, whatever, the missing edges again. And there's a nice theorem due to Tut, and it works as follows. You write down a certain matrix and the matrix is very easy to compute. So whenever you have a graph, let's do a three by three graph, then I can do a live. You can also stop the video and, and uh, well, this is a Tut matrix for, for this graph. But anyway, let's do it live. Uh, vertices are labeled in some way. And you just do the following, you write down a polynomial, a three by three polynomial uh, matrix, you write down a matrix, a three by three matrix, um, and you just look, one is connected to two. Okay, so one is connected to two, you write a variable one, two. Okay, one is connected to three, you write a variable one, three. Okay, that was the first row, second row. Two is connected to one, you want to write a variable, want to write down a variable two, one, but that's something you don't do. Instead of you write down one, two, so you have some order on the vertices, but with a minus sign in order to keep track of the order. So this here actually is then, maybe it gets a bit too, one, two with a minus sign. And then you get two, three here. And for three, you only get minus signs because uh, you have minus three, one and minus two, three. Take the determinant of that matrix and the tooth theorem is then um, that the determinant is zero if and only if there are no perfect matches. Right? So uh, homework would be to write down the determinant of this matrix and to check whether this is actually not zero, if you want to. <laughs> um, but the point is, in this case, the, it's a determinant, right? The, the write down this type of adjacency matrix is not hard, but um, you need to compute its determinant, which is already painful and something you don't want to. But certainly the polynomial you get will come in exactly those expressions, right? In, those types of expressions. So, and would need to factor them in order to check whether this polynomial is zero. And well, of course, for such small graphs, you could do it maybe by hand or at least with a computer. But for really huge graphs, hmm, that's really maybe very, maybe too costly. But very, very easily, you just take those. Um, now you can check heuristically whether there's a perfect matching or not by using the trick from before. Choose your favorite field through. Um, at your polynomial of certain number of chosen uh, chosen roots or pseudo roots, things you want to check whether they are roots, and use this trick from before. If it if it really is zero, let's say three times in a row, then you are almost certain that uh, the polynomial is zero, which means you are almost certain that your that your graph has no matching. For example, for this graph has no matching, and the quickest way of seeing this is really to write down this matrix. But yeah, that's it for today. Um, let me wrap up. So this Schwarz uh, Zippel lemma is a very, very easy idea to check whether a certain polynomial equation holds, but just throwing enough zeros at your uh, polynomial. So it's very useful in practice. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I also, of course, hope to see you next time.